Good morning. Good morning. So good to be outside in God's creation. What a wonderful morning it is. But before we make our regular announcements, let's welcome Sydney back and Miss Kennedy, our new little assistant secretary. <laughs> And we're so glad you had that time with your family and with Dan, <laughs> all of you together. So good to be here this morning. This is a Holy Communion Sunday, so if you did not receive single-serve elements, raise your hand and one of our lovely, lovely ushers and greeters will bring them to you. Looks like everybody's good. Okay. A couple of announcements. Prayer Shawl Ministry starts this week. The dates and times are in your bulletin but they are also looking for donations of yarn. So if you have worsted weight number four yarn, that's specifically what they're looking for. So if you want to bring that in Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh, Eugene only has number two at home. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, water Sunday is September 10th, so if you haven't gotten a vial, there's still vials over there. You can use any water bottle to collect water from your sacred spaces, but make sure you bring that back on September 10th. And we'll do a little liturgy around it and bring all of that water together and bless it and use that then for our baptisms and our holy, holy anointings, all those sorts of things through the year. Intergenerational faith formation begins on September 10th at 9 a.m. That is for all ages and stages, families, couples, singles, everybody, all together, 9 to 9.45 a.m. on Sunday morning. So we're really looking forward to this new way of forming our faith as a community together. And Jen is here, and Judy's back, and so we're thankful for that. Jen, do you want to talk about choirs again, or, or is it in the bulletin enough? But it's in your bulletin, too, so you can read about that. Craft Show is still accepting some crafters, so if you're interested in that, inside the porch narthex area, that is where those registrations are for. And gift card bingo is coming, our first gift card bingo on October 6th. So if you would like to sponsor one of the games in honor or in memory of someone, the prizes are $50 um, for the regular and about $100 for the specials. Um, so if you would like to do that, um, order a gift card through Barbara, but let us know it's for gift card bingo so we don't get too many and then have to play all night long. We only need 17, and I think we already have four or five sponsors. So if you would like to do that, you can, but you do not need to. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, people news. Um, I did a baptism on Friday for a non-member who um, is out of town, but they, it's actually my daughter's matron of honor's niece. And we did it at the Jordan Creek. And I'm gonna tell you more about that later because it was just, I, I'll tell you more about that. We'll talk more about that later. Um, Beth was released and is here and we're glad you're back. Janet did well with her surgery and she's still at the hospital, I believe, but not sure when she's coming back. Maybe today is what we're hoping. Kate is doing well and recovering at home. And Barbara, on Mountain Road, Barbara, <laughs> she broke her leg. So if you could keep her in your prayers as well. And of course, we continue to keep Dolores in prayer at home. Did I miss anything important? All right. If not, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to our prayers.
clip just broke, so I apologize. <laughs> no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Who are we as Christ's church? Together, our vision is welcoming, embracing, giving, celebrating. Together, our mission is no matter who you are, we welcome everyone into our Heidelberg family. Embrace the diversity of all people and their ideas. Share our time, talents, and treasures with our community. And celebrate each other all through God's love. Normally we would do a greeting, and I don't know, if you want to stay seated, that's okay. You don't have to. We'll come to you and say good morning, but let us get up and greet one another in Christian love. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Oh, you must be Johnny Carrie. What is it? Carrie. Carrie. Nice to meet you, Miss Time. I used to play baseball with the time. Yeah, yeah. How was your trip home? Oh, that's wet. That's good. It's all right. Hi, Johnny. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Yeah, maybe somehow my granddaughter should get together. I don't know. We'll see. Hi, Carrie. flowing through this place. You can feel the love of God surrounding us. I hope that you can feel that love and that you take that love with you. Our opening hymn is Sweet Hour of Prayer. As you know, through the summer, we are having our theme, Oh, the Places That You Will Go, and we are hearing a vacation story each week during the sermon message. And today, we get to hear from Miss Jen, our new choir director, music director. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, I'm to write it down because I like to ramble. Um, so, if you didn't already know, I'm Jen. I'm very excited to be your music director. And Pastor Michelle asked me to share my vacation story with you all, but it starts with my mom and her love for the beach. And growing up, my maternal grandparents had a condo at Brigantine Beach in New Jersey. And every year, 
our entire family. Now, I have 27 cousins. We didn't all try to fit in there at once, but it was a lot of us. Fit into this one bedroom condo with a loft. There was a loft. Um, but where there was a will, there was a way. <laughs> and my mom loved taking my sister and my brother and myself to spend times with our cousins and my grandparents. Um, but after my grandfather was diagnosed with kidney disease, the condo was sold to pay for his medical treatments but we all still love the beach. And in 2018, after my ter uh, maternal grandmother passed away, my mom decided it was time to have another family gathering place at the beach. And my parents were able to purchase a beautiful three bedroom home in Avon, North Carolina, which is part of the Outer Banks. Um, my family goes there together a couple times a year, whether it's just me and my parents, cause I'm the baby, uh, <laughs> or, you know, my sister tags along or my brother who's, 37 and has a couple kids um, but this year we decided it'd be a great idea to have all of the siblings and their significant others and their children squeeze into this three-bedroom house um, which means Jen the youngest doesn't get a bedroom she gets to sleep on the pull-out couch which is fine because we're at the beach but where there's a will there's a way um, and this was especially exciting for me because I was finally considered an adult I you know I'm 23, but that's fine. I'm finally not a teenager anymore. 22 really just did it for me, you know? And I got to bring my significant other, Tyler, for the first time, and I was so excited. And I was like, yes, part of the Big Kid Club. And we spent most of the time on the beach, but we always take a day trip. So this year we decided to go down to Ogrecoke, which is a city that's like an hour ferry drive, well, ferry ride, to off of the Outer Banks mainland. And doesn't that, like, doesn't a ferry ride sound nice? you think it would, but it's a free car ferry. And Tyler and I were next to the garbage truck for an hour Aww. in the heat. And it was really hot and stinky. And I, he was, I was like, this is awful. This is, well, for like five minutes, we look at the water and like, oh, is it that pretty? And then it, yeah, not great. So we get off and my sister thought it would be a great idea to walk around the town. But my five-year-old nephew did not think so. And so we did not do much walking. I think the best part of that day trip was sitting in the AC and drinking coffee. Um, so about after two hours of Noah losing his flip-flops, that's my five-year-old nephew, we decided to get back on the ferry. This time not next to the garbage truck. But we got back to the house and it was about two o'clock. And obviously everybody just wanted to sit in the AC. And Tyler kept on asking me to go for a walk on the beach at two in the afternoon. Carolina and I was like um no I'm hot and sweaty and this man does not like to sweat he does not like to be hot he's very I don't know he just doesn't like to be he doesn't like to be hot he's not that kind of guy and he asked me over and over again I'm like no I don't want to go for a walk so then I felt like a jerk and he was grumpy and I was grumpy and then we went out to dinner and we come back and my sister's like let's go look for ghost crabs and I said oh my gosh if you've never been to the Outer Banks there's these huge white crabs that come out at night and they scurry across the beach and they're really cool but like also scary so of course I wanted to go look for them and we brought my niece and my nephew and my brother and my sister and Tyler had to come along too so we're on the beach and we climb up the dune which is a workout in itself and then my brother's like I want to take a selfie with the kids and I was very offended that he not want to take a picture with his favorite sister I was like um okay ouch fine and my sister's like, let, let the kids be in picture of the dad. I was like, okay. And then, so I'm going to look for crabs. And they're like, Jen, stop walking. Why? Everybody's yelling at me. And I turn around and there's Tyler on his knee, just proposing. And I was like the biggest jerk the whole day. <laughs> I was like, of course he's proposing. And so I scream and I cry and I'm all sweaty and he tells me how much he loves me and he proposes and apparently everybody knew but me even the children and I'm like you're five and eight like how did you not tell me I don't know there was a gift and it was wonderful and yeah so that was my vacation story I got proposed to at the beach and I had no idea and we're actually going back next week so same place but I guess he can't propose again this time but yes. <laughs> As 
you know, I'm just doing a reflection, trying to tie in the scripture reading with the vacation story. And the, what I heard in that was you made a three bedroom house work for how many people? Uh, there was like 12 of, uh, maybe more like 12, 13, 12, yeah. 12 or 13, okay. Sound like our scripture? right yes. you know you're taking a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish and multiplying it and making sure that there is enough and there was indeed enough yeah. right right the other the other piece that i was listening to was the engagement story <laughs> yeah so so not only did she enjoy this vacation where all these people were able to be in one space but she is, is also now getting ready to multiply the love that they have for each other by getting married together and doing things as a couple instead of just one. So there's a lot of multiplication of things in this story. But I have another reflection too that I wanted to share. Um, this week I told you that I did the baptism and when I was reading this scripture and kind of thinking about it this week, I, Jesus went off by himself, right? So in the very beginning of this story, Jesus goes off by himself to spend some time with God. And then the crowds follow him, right? And he heals and he teaches and then it's getting nighttime and there needs to be bread and there needs to be something for everyone to eat. And then there is more than enough for everyone that is there, right? So I got to thinking about church and doing church inside the building. I, I feel like church is our time with God, our time away. But our ministry is outside the church, right? Is our ministry inside the building? No. Not really, right? We're supposed to be reaching out beyond. So many times in the stories of Jesus, is he in a temple doing all of this ministry? No, he's out and about in the world, right? Doing ministry and healing and teaching and preaching not inside the building, but he does take the rest stops. So I feel like church is important for the rest stop to fill ourselves up so that we can continue to do that work. So when I was asked to do this baptism, I have to admit, I wasn't thrilled about it. I wasn't thrilled about not being in the church to do the baptism. Because to me, I needed to be in church to do a baptism because that's where we do baptisms, right? But when I pulled up, I agreed hesitantly, and when I pulled up and I looked at Ware Dam and the water flowing and I walked up to where they were and the creek and the beautiful and the children playing on the play sets and community everywhere, that is where God is. God isn't only in the building. God is everywhere. And I couldn't imagine a more perfect place for a baptism right by the water, right in God's creation, and with community all around. How many people overheard the baptism? How many seeds may have been planted while we were there? To me, that's how God multiplies. And that's how we are called to multiply, to get out into the world. So go from here, from this time of rest with God, and remember that you have work to do. You have ministry to do. And God will multiply your all, all of your efforts tenfold. May it be so. Amen. that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. You gather your church together by the Holy Spirit. Inspire all the baptized to proclaim your abundant love throughout the world. Guide us in the mission of the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You cherish your creation from the smallest microbe to the largest mountain. 
Protect fragile ecosystems, send favorable weather, supply food and water to nourish creatures and raise us up to care for all you have created. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You desire peace and justice in the world. Instill within all political leaders your desire. Support the work of international peace organizations and provide relief to those in war-torn areas. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Strengthen those who feel faint. Give courage to those who fear and bring wholeness to those in need, especially Jenna, Jim, Sharon, Charles, Beth, Mike and Gloria, Ed, Deb, Jean, Wilmer, Michelle, Zayden, Dolores, Ruth, Janet, Chevelle, Gabe, Leroy and Dolores, Lori, Doug, Olivia, Corin, Russell, and Michelle. For those on the prayer chain we keep in our prayers and for those not mentioned in our hearts. We also pray for our weekly partner in ministry, St. John's Church in Nazareth this week. Bless them as they continue serving Christ in the community and beyond. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ who first taught us to pray saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. This is the meal where Jesus Christ is the host, where all are welcome, where no one is turned away, when the gifts of the Spirit continue to be multiplied. If you want a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are welcome at this table of sacrifice and of victory. Let us pray together. Blessed one, giver of all things, as we gather for this meal, we give thanks for all you have done, for the vast expanse of the galaxies you have fashioned, for the green and blue earth that is our home, for the bounty that all creatures receive from you, and for the rich variety of peoples, all sculpted by your hand, all bearing the spark of your image, for the blessed communion of sharing food and for moments of abundance in the midst of hunger, and for all those ancestors in faith who have shared their tables and found you in the process. For Jesus, your anointed and his community, who shared, ate, and prayed freely with the peoples of all sorts, who healed those who no one would touch, and persisted in spite of hardship, in spite of persecution, in spite of the cross, down through the centuries to this day, and we give you thanks and praise. Amen. So we remember on that night 
so long ago when Jesus sat around the table sharing another meal, another meal just like the meal we talked about today. And during the meal, beginning the meal, Jesus took bread, gave God thanks, blessed the bread and broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, when the dinner was almost complete, Jesus took the cup, again gave God thanks, blessed the cup, and shared it with his friends, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of this, remember me. Now by your spirit, which moves in all things, bless this meal, these gifts that you have brought forth from the soil. Bless also each luminous, exquisite soul and all that we do here together, that in our eating and our drinking and our sharing with each other, we may know the abundance of your gracious love and notice when your beloved community of justice and love is drawing near. Come, Holy Spirit, come. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All is now ready. The bread of life is broken for you. Take and eat. cup of blessings, of forgiveness, of grace poured out for you. Take and drink. Let us pray. Gracious one, if we have found nourishment for our hungry bodies and our deepest selves, if any of us has sensed your spirit moving here, if anyone has found themselves to be known and honored, if any among us has glimpsed the sacred in another or has tasted the abundance of your grace, that it is you who have been at work with us, and we give thanks for your beloved community, always coming near. Keep us mindful of this meal of all who hunger and thirst and of all that we mindful of your constant labor for a world of shalom, compassion, justice, sharing, and peace. May every table at which we sit, every meal in which we partake be an echo or reflection of the deep communion that all creation shares with you. We pray all of this remembering Jesus who showed us the way. Amen. So it's now time for us to give back some of the many blessings that God has first given us. It is time for our joyful noise, which is going to um, Helping Hands, I believe. Sorry. I had it in my head and then it left. I believe it's Helping Hands ministry. Through these hands. Through these hands. It will be going to Through These Hands ministry. They do uh, medical supplies and donate them to other countries, other third world countries that are in need. So do we have a couple of kids that wouldn't mind carrying around a basket?
like to make some noise? Friends, go from this place. Our communion may be over, but there is more to share. So go out. Share the gifts of the love of God that you have within yourself, knowing how much you are beloved. Amen. Our fellowship time continues, so go ahead and head over to some side porch fellowship. <laughs>